So here's the solution. Of course, we have to do this inside out. So we are going to look at the purple limit first, which represents the derivative of 1 over x squared. But whenever we're trying to do this kind of limit, we should really do it algebraically. So we are going to first open that, and then let me put down the result right here for you guys. We are going to get the limit as h approaching 0, and then we will have 1 over x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and then minus 1 over x squared all over h. And we see that we have a complex fraction situation. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by this and that. So here is x squared times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And of course, we are going to do the same on the bottom. So let's put that down right here real quick. And then we're just going to distribute. And we will get, again, let's write down the limit as h approaching 0. This and that will cancel, and we'll just have x squared right here. And then this and that will cancel, but we will have to distribute the negative. So we get negative that, and then negative 2xh, and then negative h squared. All over, on the bottom, I'm not going to distribute, I'm just going to keep it as how it is. So h times x squared times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Cool. Now, this and that cancel. This and that, they both have h. So let's factor that h here, and then we will get negative 2x, and then minus h. Have a look. This h and that h cancel. From here, we will get, hmm, we can just plug in 0 into all the h, right? So we will have negative 2x minus 0 over, this is x squared times x squared, and then this and that will be just 0 and 0, so let's put on plus 0 and uh, plus 0. Cool. Have a look. This x and one of the x right here can be cancelled. So we just get negative 2 over x times x squared, which is x to the third power. The done. And of course, if you use the power rule to differentiate 1 over x squared, we will also get that. Cool. Next, we will differentiate the result that we got earlier, and when we have the ddx, uh, let's just use the power rule. So ddx of that, I'm going to write it as negative 2x to the negative 3. From here, of course, you can just put the power to the front and then minus 1. So right here, we are going to get past the 6 and then x to the negative 4. Well, we can put x to a negative 4, like put that on the bottom and make that positive. So we get 6 over x to the positive fourth power. Great. Next, infinite series. Oh my goodness. Here we have the infinite series as n goes from 1 to infinity. Inside is 6 over x to the fourth power. This raised to the nth power. Hmm. How does this look like to you guys? This right here, it's actually a geometry series. This is our input. And in order for this to converge, we just have to make sure that the inside has the absolute value being less than 1. So let's go ahead and just put that down. Assuming this does converge, which we are going to set up the restriction later, it will converge to the first term, which is when n is equal to 1. So we are going to get 6 over x to the fourth power raised to the first power over 1 minus the common ratio, which is the inside, which is 6 over x to the fourth power. This only works when the absolute value of 6 over x to the fourth power is less than 1. So here is the condition that we have to supply. Uh, thankfully, we are not going to integrate with the sum number, but like assuming uh, we are with <laughs> in this domain. Okay, from here, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x to the fourth power to clean up the complex fraction. So we are going to get the top is just going to be a nice 6, and the bottom is going to be x to the fourth power minus 6. Cool. Right here, let's also work this out real quick. Uh, let's take out the absolute value. The absolute value stays inside right here, so we will just get 6 over absolute value of x like this, raised to the fourth power. This is less than 1. And I'm going to just multiply both sides by the this on the bottom. So we are going to get absolute value of x to the fourth power is going to be greater than 6, and then take the fourth root. So we get the absolute value of x 
has to be greater than the fourth root of 6. So this is pretty crucial because you will see later on when we integrate, uh, this is actually going to come in play, even though I didn't put down any number here. So now I can finally go back to the black pen, red pen. Ladies and gentlemen, what we are really doing is we're just integrating that. So we are going to look at integral and here is the blue 6 over x to the fourth power minus 6. You know, we are going to do partial fraction. So we will do partial fraction. But this is the partial fraction we are going to do. We're just going to factor the bottom and we are going to get x squared minus square root of 6 and then x squared plus square root of 6. This is it. You don't have to continue, you could, but as I said, this is actually okay. Uh, what do we do next? Let's see, I cannot promise, but let's see if we can fit in everything here. All right, so here we have six over this and that. So let me just keep it as this to save space. And we are going to get a linear term over that. So we have ax plus b over x squared minus square root of 6 and then plus another linear term over that so we have a sorry cx plus d over x squared plus square root of 6 cool now do this in your head multiply everybody by this and that so on the left hand side we get 6 and then on the right hand side we just have to do this times that so we get ax plus b times that, which is x squared plus square root of 6. And then we have to add it with this times that, which is cx plus d times x squared minus square root of 6. And then multiply this out. So this right here is going to be ax to the third power. And uh, this is plus, let's do this bx squared and this is plus square root of 6ax and lastly plus square root of 6b all right and <laughs> this times that becomes plus cx to a third power and then plus dx squared and minus square root of 6cx and uh, we have the minus square root of 6d blue okay all right, let's see. First off, we see that um, this and that can be combined and we know that will be zero because there's no x to a third power term on the left hand side. And that's pretty good. So we know a plus c has to be zero. So we use this and that. And we also see that this plus that has to be zero as well because we do not have the x term on the left hand side. So square root of 6a minus square root of 6c has to be 0 as well. Let's do this in your head. When we combine, they cancel, and we just have this plus that, and then with the a, right? It has both have the a. It's equal to 0. So that means a is equal to 0. If a is equal to 0, c also has to be equal to 0. So yeah, it's pretty nice. In fact, I knew this and that will be 0 because I have done this kind of question before, but that's how you do it. All right, next, this plus that, b plus d is equal to zero, and square root of 6b minus square root of 6d has to be, well, no, 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 not zero anymore, because this is the constant term, and on the left hand side, we do have that constant term, which is six. Oh my goodness, okay, so this right here means b is equal to negative d, so we can put that right here. So that means we have altogether negative 2 square root of 6d, right? Because this is negative d, and then we have to minus the d part, and then both of them have the square root of 6, so negative 2. d with the square root right here, and uh, this is equal to 6. Divide both sides by that, so let's see how this is going to turn out. All right, this and that cancel to be the three. And perhaps that's just DB as uh, that. So ladies and gentlemen, this and that cancel. So we get D equals 
negative 3 over square root of 6 and <laughs> b is just the negative version of that which is positive 3 square root of 6 huh you want me to rationalize the denominator okay so let's multiply by square root of 6 multiply by square root of 6 because this way we get 6 okay so uh, that and that cancel so this is going to be okay d is equal to negative square root of 6 over 2 yeah yes and uh, this right here b will be positive square root of 6 over 2 well right, hopefully that made you guys happier for it after the simplification yeah uh, how in the world can we <laughs> integrate that i don't know let's let's see so we are going to just be reintegrating two things integral you guys ready the first part is where's a is zero so that's good b is that so we have square root of six over two we put it here and over that okay so we just have square root of six over two let me write it down this way over that but you know what i'm going to do i'm actually going to switch the water of the <laughs> denominator i'm going to make it negative and then parentheses that and then here we get square root of six but i'm going to look at the square root of six as the following fourth root of six and square you 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 will see why okay you will see why okay so that's that and then minus first yeah minus and we have the x square cool i don't know if i should really say cool but like cool all right so that's the first part and perhaps let me just write it down better for you guys here is that the that numerator square root six over two that we got earlier but you know what we are not done yet second part we are going to add and uh, we have the part in blue so we are going to have d is negative so we have negative square root of six over two and uh this is okay but again i will just like to switch the water and in fact we will look at this as parentheses i mean fraction bar and then this guy becomes the fourth root of six and we have to square that and we add x squared all right and we are going to uh put a parenthesis here and parenthesis here and then a dx here and let me just Whew. wow i don't know if i can finish it most likely not really oh actually I, I think i can finish everything so take a look <sighs> why am i doing this <sighs> all right this guy stays so we have square root of six over two all right that's in the front but notice we have the negative here so perhaps i will just make that negative right here as well when we integrate one over some number square minus x square this becomes this right here is going to be the inverse tangent situation this is going to be the inverse hyperbolic but not necessarily tangent because inverse hyperbolic cotangent can be the answer as well it really depends it depends on the x values here this x value is detected by this you see the absolute value of x is greater than that and this is bigger than one when you want to use the inverse hyperbolic cotangent function you do that when the x is greater than one or less than negative one so this right here is going to be the following okay let's see how to write that we get one over a which is this right here so i'm going to multiply by one over the fourth root of six inverse hyperbolic cotangent so c o t h negative one <laughs> i don't want to erase anything let, let me try again let me try again i'm just going to put the two over there like 
right there and the little fourth root of 6 right here and I'm going to put down the C-O-T-H with a negative 1 here and then the parentheses and we just have X over that which they are both in blue so I will still keep them blue H, I mean X over the fourth root of 6 yes next this is a minus and then the same story pretty much we are going to write down the same thing but we are going to use the inverse tangent that's it so we have the negative so i'm going to just write it down we have the negative and we have the square root of six over two and then we have that which is the fourth root of six right here and this is going to give us the inverse tangent and it's going to be x over the a value which is that so x in blue over Maybe the fraction partial of in black just to make it look nicer. A, which is the fourth root of six. Wow, I did it! I fit everything here. One try, okay? I did this is not a this is not like a second take one. One try. One try. Yeah. Plus D. <laughs> Alright, so hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. If I did, um I don't know, you guys fix that on your own. Uh, where the negative or anything. I don't know, but this looks just very satisfying. Uh, I do have some space right here, I don't know. Um, yeah. But anyway, hopefully you guys all like this. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. So this is my second all-in-one calculus question. If you guys want to design your own all-in-one calculus question, drop your all-in-one calculus question in the comment. I, I don't know, I cannot promise I will work it out, but I will see what you guys come up with. Oh. Anyway, that's it. Now I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. As a calculus teacher, I'm always looking for new resources to help students learn better, and at Brilliant, they provide exactly just that. The best thing is that they focus on interactive learning, and all of their courses in math, science, and computer science are all based on that fundamental. This is from the Calculus International course, and you can see that they use visual and physical intuition to present the major topics of calculus, which are the things that we did today. Limits, derivative, integrals, and infinite series. Each lesson has storytelling and beautiful animations, so you will not get bored. After the course, you will really understand what calculus is and what it can do. So, let's get started today. Use the link in the description, brilliant.work slash blackpenredpen, so that way you can get a 20% off discount. I really want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I also want to thank you guys for checking it out.